Hello and welcome to the Overwatch Xbox community. We've got a nice 4-0 undefeated battle of the undefeated game from the Challengers here. I'm your host, Salt Pepper, joined by Fallen Potatius. We've got PCOW and D9 both wrestling there at the top of this tier, and we're excited to bring this game to you. I've been looking forward to this game all week. Fallen, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah, I've been like taking a bit of a break from like the OXC, but it's good to be back and it's good to be streaming with you and help commentate on this game. Absolutely, man. Um, like I said, both these teams coming out with undefeated records. One of them will fall tonight. We've got a great slate for you with Volskaya up first, followed by Nepal and Rialto to close it out. So good opportunity here. A little bit of flexibility in these teams. Some substitutes on the bench. Itching to come in. Um, but we've got both readies from the Capitals. So we'll get you into Volskaya as soon as possible. Like I said, I've been waiting to this, waiting for this game for quite a bit. Two Titans of the tier going up against each other. We will expect a solid game from them. Quite strong in their own right, actually. While we have an opportunity, though, there will be the OXC breakdown on Tuesday nights, 8 Eastern. So if you got a chance to catch our inaugural episode, uh, that was last Tuesday, obviously. If you didn't, though, it is on the Twitch channel for you to check out. Recapping all of the week four action tier by tier, uh, going to do some in depth analysis in some of the games, and we've got top plays from the week. So make sure you were there to check it out this coming Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Should be a really good time. Yeah, and as you said, the OXC recap. Great Overwatch news about uh, that nerf and buffs and that stuff. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, we try and uh, obviously Overwatch centric. We want to bring up the um, like related to Overwatch content throughout the uh, the game itself, new maps, new heroes, uh, patch notes, and then also obviously OXC news. Speaking of which, the tri uh, ad drop deadline, guys, is this coming Tuesday. Uh, same day as the next recap show, the twenty fourth. Make sure you get. You know, your roster's finalized, adds players if you need to, a lot of free agents looking for teams, so make sure you are in that chat, checking those out. Um, got a little bit of time to make those ads at the end of week 5 here. Then you've got 48 hours on that Tuesday to make your final decisions, and that will be your roster for the rest of the season, so make sure you get that in. But coming out of here, PCOW, um, like I said, excited for this game, 4-0, coming up very strongly behind uh, Pride. The captain playing Reinhardt here. On Gods on D.Va, J Wraith going Soldier is half sec. They're on Junkrat. Cash pull on Mercy as Fluffy Munchkin goes Anna. For the attackers, it's Bigger Mac on Hanzo. The little snipes goes Diva. OC Hammer. I'm looking at Tuzzle here with Pride. Also going Reinhardt. Nice uh, pharmacy combo. Susie's back in the Prophet in the Sky. And Reformed Truth also on an Anna. And it's for both sides. It's the same support combo. So see how this pans out for them. Coming in quickly, Susie's back. Going over the top, looking to get damage and sees Cash Pull, but actually gets completely taken down. That's Fluffy Munchkin with the first kill on the board there and doing a really good job at the fence. Able to clean up. Bigger Mac answering one back on Pride, and that will be crucial for the attackers. Uh, now the no shield for the defense, but I think it could be difficult. They'll probably wait for the rest of their reinforcements to come straight through that choke, waiting for the defensive Reinhardt to respawn. They have a bit of an advantage. We'll see if they capitalize. Fallen, what do you see? I'm just seeing, as you would in a normal game, a lot of chaos going on at the choke to begin with. But from what I have just noticed, is the far uh, is often getting some like cheeky angles off and hitting a couple of like splash damage rockets, which you know, as we saw there, took out an Arno, which you know, carry on playing like that, and then it's going to be a real threat. Yeah, and now finally, uh, you're very able to kind of have a little bit of supremacy here on the point. The uh, soldier for PCOW D9 up on the high ground, but not really paying attention that fair, and it could cost them. You see the kills just go in the way of D9, and they'll be able to wrap up this point in about a minute and a half. Very strong performance from them, and I think it all kind of started with Pride falling there in the front. Um, but solid mm -hmm. play from both sides. Still some uh, ultimates here as j Wraith has a uh, tactical visor coming into this second checkpoint. Little snipes with the diva bomb as well. They may use that to initiate, but ultimates on the horizon for both teams here. We'll see how they use these. Uh, to engage a second point. Six minutes and 20 seconds on the clock for D9. Nothing to sneeze at, and they'll be encouraged by that fast start. That 
Shatter here for Pride, looking for an opportunity to use it. Susie's back, able to take down Fluffy Munchkin once more. And here's the Diva Bomb initiation over the top. Does catch Cash Ball. That's close supports down now for the supports, but a fantastic reaction there from Pride to use the Shatter. Still cleaning up in the back, though. It's Susie's back, able to take a little bit of an advantage there, but the Shatter was solid. They just couldn't follow up. Tactical Vizor trying to come through. Bigger Mac shooting down. J-Ray the boy really got a lot going. And now it's a just spawn sent. Dragon Strike, already a point gone there for PCOW, or for D9 rather, and a really solid attack from them. Been able to take Mongods out of mech was the Ferris Susie's back, but then going in for the res was, I believe that, that was the prop coming, that was Cash Bowl going for the res and didn't quite get it off, but the defense is able to hold, gave up 67% of the point, but it will be D9 retreating, and uh, they'll have to come back in to re-engage, but really thought PCOW would fold there, they hold on a little bit longer. Yeah, PCOW already have a lot more out, you know, with the Earth Shadow already in their pocket and also the Nano Boost coming up really fast. So it's going to be interesting how they combo that and hold this next push. Uh, not hold the push, attack the next push, sorry. <laughs> That's a very good point. Form Truth looking for an opportunity to use that. Seuss is back now to the Sky. Mongods um, able to shut down the attack a little bit there. And without that fair, I think it kind of limits their options coming into point. Profit able to get uh, Susie's back on her feet, though. So we'll see if they use this to initiate. Mongods actually purple there out of mech now. And now the advantage going the way of the attacker is Little Snipes able to take down the opposite there. Still looking pretty good. A little bit of retreat from the defenders. And surprised the attack isn't initiating with this advantage. They know they have the Diva out of mech. But still kind of holding back a little bit, not wanting to engage. I don't know if they have any if they have any members down. Pretty much just waiting right outside here. Susie's back able to take down Fluffy Munchkin again. That's been a battle back and forth between those two. Now finally the initiation coming in from Little Snipes on a point, but very caught out. Not a lot of support. The Dragon Strike coming in to help a little bit. But Little Snipes almost out of mech, able to get away. And now it's a Coalescence coming through here from Cash Bowl. Who switched off the Mercy a little bit ago and able to help the defense clean up a little bit more. positioning here and I think the res comes back through those snipes back up and now with a mech so this attack still going on for the attackers or maybe just trying to get out of the way now among us is able to get one with that self-destruct crucial for them and once again the attack has to back off still three minutes and 30 seconds and they do have 67 percent of the point so um not dire here for d9 but definitely this attack a little bit more difficult than their initial one on the a check one mm -hmm. definitely Both teams are getting their ults, and you know, as I'm pretty sure any Overwatch fan will know, that ults can be game changers. That's why they're called ultimates. Well, exactly. Definitely <laughs> change know, the tide of the fight. You can go from being a very even fight to a fight easily won. Didn't quite take advantage of the May wall there. They had the tank, OC Hammer, who switched onto the Arisa, swapped out, but didn't actually. Take advantage of the wall and the isolated tank there. The Blizzard coming out from the defenders. With the, all the kills going the way of the attack. Now it's Mongods with the mana boost. Trying to at least save what little bit of the point the defense still is holding on to. Now a rocket barrage coming in from Susie's back. Doesn't really find anything and almost goes down. I still think the defense is holding on pretty strongly. Now it's a third ultimate here from j Ray, Just with the tactical visor and no protection for the attackers. The defense matrix will hold off a little bit. But still it's two kills for j Ray and takes little snipes out of mech. So not really... I think the defenders are still going to be able to hold on to this here, and the attackers can't focus down the targets. Yeah. Right yeah, the defenders did hold on. And it was an amazing hold. I really thought that was going to go the other way at the start of it. Yeah, all ultimates used, though, for the defenders. Mongod's still close to another self-destruct, so that'll be helpful for them. But I think the attack... Well, as I say that, though, a few ultimates... Down now for the attack as well. Seuss is back switching over to a Junkrat. Having reset there. Reform Truth and Profit both pretty far away. But they do have the Supercharger and the Dragon Strike. So we'll see if they can use that to find a space. Now a kind of preemptive Diva Bomb coming through. Now an ultimate a bit wasted there as it didn't quite catch anybody. Maybe we should have waited a little bit longer for the initiation. So now obviously the ultimate's really going the way of the uh, attackers. But I think Mongod's actually switched over to Azario. So probably just using that ultimate there. Seeing if they can get out of it. But then... Uh, switching over tanks to kind of change up a little bit. I think the Zarya Ryan combos um, pretty good set here. Uh, they're going to be a little bit hurt by the uh, Junkrat spam if they're not able to use the defense matrix, but I think uh, the swap with the Graviton and uh, Bubble is going to be totally worth it. Fantastic Shatter coming in from Pride, able to catch a couple, but trying to negate the other direction. It's a triple kill for Bigger Mac. 
and able to save that point here for the attackers. I think they'll be able to come in and cap us now. Just Fluffy Munchkin on the point, uses a Biotic Grenade and able to take down a couple, but now here goes for D9 and a little bit of a contention coming back from half sack. Has to zip off the point though, and that will do it. D9 able to cap the point. Look at the time on the clock and a solid attack from them, but what a fantastically timed Dragon Strike from Bigger Mac to continue that push after a spectacular shadow the other way. Definitely. Just under a minute left on the clock, though. Ooh. A little bit of time to work with. Definitely um, not too terrible. Obviously, they would have wanted a little bit more going in with, I think, 6 minutes and 20 seconds on the uh, the B checkpoint after capping A so quickly. But that's definitely more than enough time, and they didn't want to be in overtime and not have the opportunity to attack A. But they'll be looking to put up a good defense here and make it a non-issue and just wrap it up here in two rounds. Not if PCOW have anything to say about it. Again, guys, you're watching two undefeated teams, 4-0, in the Challenger tier for uh, Supremacy going into the second half of the season. A little bit of trash talk in the Discord channel. I'm excited. I know these teams definitely want to beat each other and keep that flawless record. Only a handful of teams in the community still undefeated. So, looking to be among well, that rare group, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like Pride going back onto the Reinhardt, played very solidly on defense there for them. Mon God's possibly going to do this, though when it's attacking, it's difficult to tell. J Raid on the soldier. Half second decided it's cashed, goes over to the end of Fluffy Munchkin trying Brigida to triple support, maybe? Uh, I don't know why I try and guess attacking comps early. For the defenders, though, a little more reliable. Bigger Mac going back onto the Hanzo and had that crucial dragon strike there towards the end of round one. Little snipes going diva as OC Hammer goes with Rissa. Susie's back onto the Junkrat as Reform Truth and Profit are unchanged. Anna and Mercy, respectively. Now for the attackers, looking a little bit more uh, common as Pride is still in the Reinhardt Mongods going over the Zarya this time. J-Wraith going Reaper, Hasak, Cash Bowl, and Fluffy Munchkin, a triple support set, Lucio, Moira, Brigida. Coming in very quickly, using the speed boost here from Hasak, nice aggressive attack, but it's a high ground defense from uh, D9. Bigger Mac able to take down Mongods early, and that could disrupt the attack, but maybe they can start earning some percentage. Expect the defense to start coming back down now, and they do just... Actually, just staying on the high ground, allowing a little bit of this point to be taken, and no one's really contesting. Interesting to see, but finally they will come on right before the first point taken. Susie's back by himself, getting kind of beat up here by Fluffy Munch, but able to get away for the time being. Pride's able to get the pin onto Little Snipes, who goes directly over the side. And now kills starting to go the way of the defenders. Bigger Mac just popping off completely. Finally put to rest by J-Rave. That could be crucial here for the defenders, but still no sticking percentage on the point, and I think PCOW doesn't really have the numbers to continue this attack. It's like we'll have to retreat. Still a high ground setup, now the attack coming out around their right hand side, the defensive left to see if they can disrupt this high ground push. Zoom's back trying to keep them in through the doorway, now has a tire. We'll use that into space and catch his pride. Could be crucial for them. Another Dragon Strike here on the point for Bigger Mac. Not quite able to catch anybody, but may split up this attack a little bit longer. Little Snipes now out of Mech, though. Didn't pay attention to Mongods and able to power down that D.Va. Still, the attack looks pretty strong here on the point. Uh, kind of a scattered... Or the, uh, the defenders, rather. D9 looks really good on the point. Uh, the, the attack having a really difficult time trying to find an edge here. Mongods still alive, and they've got a DPS around the corner. Um, but I don't know if they really... Maybe they don't have the advantage. Pride back in the mix now. Maybe this is it for them. Finally swinging away and take control. And PCOW able to cap the point. I think the, they've kind of benefited from the shorter respawn. They're able to get numbers back and keep that fight going long enough to uh, get reinforcements to take the point. So now with just about <laughs> six minutes on the clock going into B. Uh, Fallen, what are you seeing from the defenders? Well, as you can see in the top right hand corner of your screen, OG Hammer's got the supercharger and then they've got both support holes so that can keep them in a fight for a very long time and the supercharger is basically the same as Arnus Nono but it's just the whole team wide so that could definitely come out and help hold but as you as you also see now on the top left the attacking team have basically got all of their ults so yeah the ult game is going to be fun I'm just waiting and watching to who's going to 
start using them first and who's going to get the most kills out of them. And D9 looking to control this high ground here, but it will be PCOW trying to get up there. Pride a little bit low, but gets the safety of his supports. Trying to go into point, but it's a defensive self destruct coming out. Little Snipes catches nobody as the sound barrier is in to protect the rest of PCOW. Coalescence coming through here, but the Dragon Strike again solid. Zeus is back able to get the kill onto Pride with the tire. We've kind of seen that more than once now. I don't know if the attack still has it in. J Wraith able to take down a tank that could be helpful, but now Little Snipes out of the for the defenders means that the attack might have a bit of the advantage here. Still staying tight here on the point. OC Hammer still up. Prophet trying to help the tank, but I think with that Reaper will not survive. The rest of the reinforcements coming in for the attack. It's just Reform Truth on the high ground. We'll see if the reinforcements from the defense can come back in quickly enough, but PCOW with a very aggressive B attack. Finally, the contention coming through here. Little Snipes able to eat up the uh, ball from Moira. Steps up the point slightly, and PCOW turning it right around. Fantastic attack from them, and they finish round two with a lot of time to clock. That was a very fast cap. <laughs> yeah, four minutes and 26 yeah. seconds. Definitely took them longer on A, but uh, coming into B quickly and able to shut down the defense so quickly. Mm. I think with this aggressively as D9 came out initially, I don't know if we expected that, but... Now going into multiple rounds here. Potential for more. We'll see what the defense looks like in PCOW. We saw how quickly D9 was able to attack A in the first round. PCOW is short up a little bit. They may be able to only need a tick with that 4 minutes and 26 seconds, but D9 looking to make it difficult. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. Similar comp here for the defense PCOW, kind of what they switched to there on V. They've got Mon Gods over on the Zarya's half sacks onto the Junkrat. j Red's still on Soldier, but now they switch Fluffy Munchkin off the Ana to a Zenyatta, and I like that pick. They may be expecting the Fairy again from the attack, but Susie's back opts for a tank this time onto the Roadhog. Bigger Mac still on Hanson, I think has been very effective for them. Little Snipe switching over to a support now, going Moira as OC Hammer uh, stays on the Reinhardt. Reform Truth over to a Brigitte, and the Prophet still on Mercy. So. Um, nice flexibility from them, but again, just oh. hit, getting picks that early, it's going to be huge for the attack. A spectacular shot there, and now J-Rate, they will take down OC Hammer. Um, kill's kind of going either direction, Fluffy Munchkin back on his feet, but Mongods is down now for the defenders. They don't have an extra res, and now Bigger Matt getting the kill onto Fluffy Munchkin again with OC Hammer back up on the res. Uh, it, it looks good for D9, we'll see if they start to attack here. Pride a little bit of trouble with the Brigida Reform Truth, looking to get back to... The safety of the point, just 22 seconds, they only need to win this one fight basically in order to uh, just have the one tick to get on round four. Oh, but here we go, D9 able to get the kills they need. I don't know if, yeah, the defense might be able to hold on to this and they will actually take the first point with just 60 seconds. We'll get 30 seconds to go back into B. Fantastic uh, response here from D9 after kind of getting rolled over a little bit on uh, their round two defense. question is, is that 30 seconds long enough for one successful push? I mean, we'll have to see. They definitely have a little bit of the advantage here. Bigger Mac close to a Dragon Strike. They do have the Coalescence. Susie's back almost has a uh, Whole Hog as well. Uh, the Defenders just with half sacks. Rip Tire, so it really depends on how this engagement comes through. You expect the tire. Here it comes over the top. We'll see if it's able to get anybody. Little Snipes, it's going to be big for them. I think still using that Coalescence, so a strong response there. Bigger Mac going around the back and looking to get the Dragon Strike in. He's able to catch Manga out of Mac. Susie's back, catches Fluffy, Fluffy Monkey, Munchkin. D9 rolling on to point B. Oh my god. What an attack from them. Fantastic here. And I, I don't I don't think we expected that. Not after no. uh, PCOW coming back through. D9 struggled on point B in round one. But coming through with no problem whatsoever. Like, damn, I, I'm shocked that they've done that. A minute and a half for the entire round to be over with. It will take a couple of seconds for capping on point B. Now PCOW but... absolutely really. <sighs> I think PCOW are a bit scared now because I guarantee they weren't expecting to get robbed like that. Yeah, it's certainly not. It's important now, though, because there's no time left on the clock for D9 PCOW uh, with an opportunity here. If they do turn around and they've got enough time definitely to cap both points, and if they do that with time on the clock, they still get to take that A checkpoint for the win. So um, 
could be a draw on the cards though, depending on how you know astutely uh, D9 is able to defend. But and four minutes and twenty six seconds should be difficult. It really could. I think we've seen strong attacks from both sides, but um, D9 maybe had a little bit of a stronger defense on round two. Obviously not a four minutes and twenty six seconds defense. I think uh, PCOW was able to cap in around two minutes and change, but. Um, yeah, all on the line now, and I really don't think that COW expects D9 to be able to roll through so smoothly. But I like the Lucio coming out here for the attackers, looking to get the point quickly and not make, not waste any time. It's a triple uh, set for them, half sack, actually a quad tank with the uh, devil support, Bluffy much in a cash bowl. We need to stay very tight and death volley going into the point here. Susie's back with a quick pick on a cash bowl though, and that is not what you want to see in the COW. Still time to work with, but again, the kill early means it may waste its push for them. And it's another high ground defense, and a lot of poke damage coming in from the defenders. I like this D9 defense. You often see people holding up near the choke here uh, by the truck, but opting for a little bit further back and making the attackers really come to them. What this also does is extends the amount of time the attack has to walk in order to get back to the fight, which, um, especially in these kind of late round situations, you want to waste as much time off the bank as possible. All members able to get over to the other side. It's a nice pivot from them, just able to overlook the point. Members coming down now from the defense as the attack starts to roll in. Early pick on the little snipes is going to be huge for them. But the tire actually falls flat here from Susie's back. Kind of surprised to see that kill still going the way of the half sack absolutely popping off. But really the only bright spot here for the attackers is the rest of the defense is starting to clean up. Fluffy Munchkin though able to get the mix as well. And I think, yeah, now that OC Hammer's about to drop, fantastic attack there from... PCOW, just a couple members left in D9, but I don't think they have it yet. Bigger Mac drops off, and yeah, again, 1 minute and 26 seconds. Uh, all it took for PCOW to take this point. Switch here from Pride onto the uh, Hammond. And again, looking to get in quickly, and maybe kind of just roll straight through here and catch D9 off guard again. If they're able to get this point capped with a little bit of time on the clock, they have uh, the opportunity to take A for the win. OC Hammer narrowly evades the hook there, but I don't think knew much about it. Now it's a Graviton coming in through from the defend or from the attackers rather, but doesn't really catch anybody there, and I don't think they're really able to capitalize. J Wraith coming out for the attack with a sound barrier to keep everybody up. Self-destruct from Lil Snipes catches two. It's fantastic here for the defenders as it's the Dragon Strike catching another two. It's protecting you from Bigger Mac and Lil Snipes combining well to continue holding this point a little bit longer. Sagger onto J Wraith will cause P uh, PCOW to have to wait a little bit longer to come in for this next attack. You see the silhouettes of the current attackers coming back through. PCOW coming back in quickly behind that Reinhardt shield from Pride. We're going to swing in big. It's a half sack. Uh, whole hog coming through. Cash bowl drops though for the attackers. It's kills going kind of the other way. Susie's back able to catch a fantastic double there. And once again, the defenders economical with their ult is able to wrap up those kills. Spectacular defense from D9. I really like that death blossom from Susie's back. Able to catch a couple. And uh, yeah, really forcing PCOW's attack to change shape. See J Rev now going over to the Pharah and half sack onto a Diva off of the uh, Roadhog. We'll see if that pans out for them. I'm just sitting here waiting for Bigger Mac to use his dragons because he's been getting like twos before, so I reckon, I hope he gets sent like that again. Ooh, J Wraith in a tough spot. Able to get a little bit of a shield there from Fluffy Munchkin on the Brigida for the attackers. Now a coalescence coming out. There's a the dragon strike directly into the heart of the attack. Fluffy Munchkin, the only one caught there, but the coalescence still out for cash bowling to keep everybody up. Kills still just one and one. OC Amber and half sack. Uh, effectively down for the team's bigger max down as well. PCOW's defense again holding very strongly. self destructing Little Snipes. We'll see if Panza actually two there, and I don't think they expected that to actually come through. Nano boost on a bigger Mac could be troublesome for the uh, defenders here, but or attacker rather, but yeah, bigger Mac able to wrap up. No ultimates on the board. A few switches still coming through, but. Yeah, D9's attack, or defense right now, has been very solid. Only 30 seconds left on the clock for PCOW. Seconds we do not have time to waste 
Final attack here for PCOW. It's another Dragon Strike coming through directly through the attack. See if he catches anybody. I think they're able to avoid it that time. A little bit of an ultimate gone for them, but it does delay them slightly. Now trying to come back in aggressively. Pride using a Shatter, catching four. What a fantastic Shatter here from Pride. Swinging away and completely taking control of the match. Oh, what a crucial Shatter there for Pride. Able to catch a couple, and I think that's it for PCOW. They are able to take it, but it is in overtime. Oh, God. I'm going to see a fifth round, and even a sixth round. <laughs> now the delay coming back in. 83.2% gone here for PCOW. Just to wrap up the rest of this point, they need this right here. This is the last fight. D9 wins this, and they will win the game. Another Death Blossom from Zeus is back. Catches Fluffy, Fluffy Munchkin, and the defenders just holding on for their absolute lives. The Dragon Strike coming through from Bigger Mac, not quite as effective, and they actually they get off the point, and that is it. Overtime meter ticks down. Oh. That is a D9 win. D9 win. Wow. And that, that aggressive game. round three attack from them. Was really so intense. Of the game. Yeah, Bigger Mac with a fantastic uh, Dragon Strike. This was their initial attack on that first round, and able to use this to really change the tide of this fight right at the defense. was about to come back and kind of counter engage them. Yeah, really making a difference there for the team, and D9 gets the win. How will PCOW respond? We'll be back with Nepal in uh, just a few minutes. You're watching the Overwatch Xbox community. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe to our channel or donate at oxgaming.com. All funds collected goes to prizes for season and tournament winners. To our current subscribers, we appreciate your continued support. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more OXC action after this short break. Welcome back to the Overwatch Xbox community. Uh, fantastic game so far between PCOW and D9. Four rounds on Volskaya sees D9 take it 4-3. And looking to stay up at the top of the challenger tier. Both teams coming into this game 4-0. And, oh, and now PCOW, um, you know, right on the cusp here. Just one game away from losing their perfect record. So hoping to bring it back here on Nepal. And we've seen teams do this with control points as the center map. To win the second one, kind of come back out, and then make it a decisive third. So uh, we'll be playing the third map. We also regardless, but... I'm sure PCOW would like to go into that game knowing they still have a chance at winning this one. But, uh, yeah, really solid from both sides in that first game. Um, and, yeah, Fallen, what, what, would, what did you see? I know we've kind of got different perspectives here. Um, that D9 attack, what can we even say? That round 3 attack was insane. Yeah, like, the way D9 just seemed to steamroll the round 3 and complete both objectives in like what a minute and a half total for the round time yeah. it was just amazing but with like i did seem to notice the dps of d9 so at the time it was susie's back and bigger mac they were just popping off like they were getting like two or one picks with their ult which really really does turn a fight like one kill may not seem much but in a game where you can just capitalize on it so easy. Yeah, just that one kill or getting an enemy down to half can really turn a fight into your favor, and that's what they've done. Yeah, absolutely. I will say that uh, um, Susie's back in Bigger Mac really able to turn the tide of those fights um, by doing exactly that. If you get a couple kills with the ultimates, using them well. Um, Bigger Mac had a few that fell flat, but obviously earning them so quickly 
as Dragon Strikes playing Hanzo it wasn't really an issue. They were still able to uh, capitalize on the separation created. So I uh, will see if they look to continue doing that here on Nepal. Again, PCOW, a very good team and an opportunity to get back into this game tied up here before we go to Rialto in the third round. But uh, yeah, this, this game absolutely living up to the hype and it's been a fantastic watch so far. Coming out on the blue team here, still PCOW on your left. We didn't uh, switch sides because obviously just a control point doesn't really matter. Uh, we will for Rialto, so it'll be PCOW attacking on Rialto first, and maybe that could change the uh, title of the game as well. It's Pride back on the Reinhardt, played very solid in Five, Volskaya. Four, God's going... Two, uh, one, uh, uh, wow. Roadhog, goodness, sorry guys. Uh, J Wrath on the soldiers, half sex on the junker, cash ball going Moira and Fluffy Munchkin on the Fusio. For the red team here, D9, it's Bigger Mac over onto the fair as Little Snipes goes Roadhog, OC Hammer on Orisa Susie's back, onto the junk rat, form truth on Lucio and Profit on Mercy. Nice pharmacy combo here for D9. And J Wraith, the only one really able to deal with it. Susie's back with the kill under Pride, and D9 will use this to engage. B members in a tight area, Susie's back with eyes. Uh, like saucers looking for opportunities to get the picks and may find it here on this roadhog it's a little bit of health but boot but just over the pit over to the edge mongots will be able to two back off as d9 caps this point early Ooh, D9 set up with a nice aggressive uh, defense here. Little Snipes getting a fantastic pull through J Wraith. Or pull through the shield, grabs J Wraith, and now Mongots is down as well. Little Snipes doing a good job here on the Roadhog for D9. That's a third pull in a row, I believe, for him. And that's absolutely popping off for D9. Really changed the tide of this. Uh, the attack very staggered here from PCOW and D9 content to just clean up here at this initial choke. The Red's coming through and is able to take pride, but I, again, I don't think they have the support. But nobody available to. Take down that Reinhardt. It's going to be D9 retreating back to point as Mongod is able to turn one back the other direction for the uh, blue team. D9 now maybe in a bit of a difficult spot. Susie back a little low, but is able to retreat to point. Pride trying to lead the rest of PCOW back in here. And now the fight kicking off a bit of a boot, but doesn't quite go through. OT Hammer able to use the. Um, Kind of halt before anything actually panning out, but a fantastic tire here from Susie's back will again maybe hold on to the point here for D9. J Wraith going into the air to respond to the Pharah, not quite able to get it done on the ground as a soldier, so we'll see if they're able to win that aerial supremacy. Half sack with a tire, but drops, won't be able to use it, and the point two thirds of the way gone for PCOW. Still holding on tightly though are the rest of D9 until now. Finally able to take that point back, and PCOW starts to earn a little bit of percentage. Ooh, dirty. That's ouch. Oh that's painful. Ouch. There, J I, I the, uh, feel you. <laughs> that is that's a rough move right there. PCOW will definitely hold on a little bit longer with that tank down for D9. That is that's unfortunate. We've all been there. All been there. Mm Both teams poking and prodding. D9 doesn't quite need to commit just yet. They do have 83% of the point, but they uh, probably at some point need to get in there, specifically because it's only 33% that that 33 turns into uh, 40, 50, 60 pretty quickly. So we'll have to engage, and they do have the ultimates to do so. We're still looking for the gap. Right here with the shatter, just waiting for the engagement. They may be going around the defensive right hand side, but still nothing really coming through for D9, D9's attack just yet. Here comes the Shatter again, just looking to stagger, able to get Susie's back quickly. Lil Snipes gets pinned, may not be able to find the healing, but will retreat. But still, a good opportunity for PCOW to push back these uh, D9 attackers, and he's already up to 65% or so. With the majority of the alts, they really have an opportunity to take this. Mongots with the bomb over the top, the stagger is real here for PCOW. Two tanks down now, and uh, they should be able to take this well past the 83% earned by D9. This game, it's, it, I thought to begin with, this map that is 
round and the map was gonna go in Dino's favour, but now it's yeah, it really isn't. Yeah, it looks like the uh, sound barrier used by Reform Crew trying to help D9 get into the point. Uh, they've got Bigger Mac over the top, finally trying to get a little bit of space through using a rocket barrage in the sky, but doesn't really find anything and will drop. Supports here, yeah, Bigger Mac able to uh, actually going down via Fluffy Munchkin and now kills all over the place. 99% here for PTOW looking to hold on, but now coming in with the res was the Prophet. j Wraith able to use a rocket barrage in the direction, but taken down by that newly rezzed Pharah. It's like D9 may be able to flip this point back though. It's just Pride here on the point, able to avoid the boop off the side, but still in a bit of a tough spot, and finally does drop. D9 able to cap the point back with 99% gone for PCOW. Yeah, right there at the death, able to take the point back. We'll see if they hold on long enough. Not a lot of time for PCOW to re-engage here, but I think just enough to get back to point and contest. Self-destruct from Mungods will catch Reform Truth. That could be helpful for them, but now we are in a 99 overtime. Still, Bigger Mac over the top is able to get this damage. No one's really paying much attention to the Ferris. Overtime meter almost dropped, but doesn't quite catch. Shatter coming through isn't as effective, I think. And Pride was really able to capitalize on that and now falls. D9 still with the advantage, and they actually may be able to take this. And yeah, just Mongods left to contest the rest of D9 completely. Yeah, just bullying that D.Va, and that is it. D9 able to take the first round here and one round away from beating PCOW. Oh, what a game so far. PCOW, a very strong defense, and I think on paper it looked like they were going to be able to take that round with, you know, they, they were about 75% or so with four ultimates. On Again, on paper it looks like they've got the round one, but D9 able to come back in and scatter that defense a little bit and just take advantage slowly but surely, shut them down, and then after they flip the point back, just not a lot of time for PCOW to reorganize themselves. So able to take advantage of some ideal timing, and see, we'll see if D9 can hang on. PCOW up against the wall here. Bon, what do you think PCOW needs to do to uh, change the tide of this fight? I really don't know. Like, D9 going into this map as well as the last map, they were just going in as I feel like they were just a stronger team. And I feel like PCOW need to have like a quick talk between them and see what's going wrong and try to fix it because, like, I don't feel like they know what their objective of the game is. Like, rather than just playing the objective of the match, which is capture the point, they need to set their own kind of target kind of objectives, like who to target first, where to be, and just put stuff like that into place, and then they'll be able to turn it around. But as I am saying this, they are capping the point, so it's making me sound a little bit stupid that I'm saying here, sitting here saying that they're doing things wrong, and then they just go and do it right. But that's well, often how it is whenever I commentate. I will say it looks really good for D9 right off the bat. Look like they kind of have the supremacy. The PCOW are a little bit more patient, able to come in and get the kills. Shadow coming through from Pride. They are able to take down Bigger Mac, which could be helpful. It has been a influential DPS for them, but not quite able to get too much out of it. Made from Susie's back. Trying to split the defense just a little bit. They'll have to be smart about that May and not push forward because that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to get isolated out there. Um, yeah, no reason to be that aggressive, and I think they may pay for it. Form Truth able to take down Pride, and that is a huge loss here for uh, PCOW. Graviton coming through will kind of delay them just a little bit, but they're able to get the wall up. Um, and again, she's not identifying ways to use his ultimates or kind of play around that May. Ultimate's coming out now for D9. And yeah, PCOW able to wrap up though. Kind of surprised. I really think that uh, in a lot of ways D9 should have had that fight with the, the May wall blocking off. They were able to avoid the Graviton and kind of uh, separate out. But even with that, that wall, they weren't able to um, get any quick kills and kind of let members of PCOW reorganize themselves. So that, that could end up proving costly. Maybe a little bit of indecision here from D9. They were going to go main, but decided to go up in this upper right-hand side. But now they're delaying, and I think the defense may be a little bit aware of it if they have a little bit of poke there from Bigger Mac, who's now switched back over to the Hanzo. Mm -hmm. Wasting no time coming into point, but only 10% left. PCOW in a very good position to pull this back, but D9 looking to get the win right here, right now. 
J Wraith with a Death Blossom. We'll see if they use it. They've got the oh, fantastic sleep from Reform Truth. I think, oh, able to uh, shut down the. I think, oh, just crucial for them. But overtime meter takes yeah, down. Oh, and PCOW just, oh, what a uh, what a sleep that I think that that was really influential. But Graviton able to come out from PCOW uh, as well, and fantastic timing with the ultimates from them. And I think they kind of learned their lessons from the last time. Able to take that point, and now we're tied up 1-1 on Nepal. And then all the last part of the round happened so quickly, they weren't even get, able to get members on the point. D9 sacrificed the second round there. See if PCOW can use the momentum of that second round win to win it here. And tie up the series before we go into Rialto. Not a lot of changes from either side. I think they've kind of settled into the comps that they feel are working and sticking with it. Hashtag back onto the Tracer. The only notable difference from the uh, first game on Volskaya. Trying to find a little bit of space. No one going down just yet, but now that Tracer is in behind looking for those supports. Actually finding Bigger Mac and maybe able to take advantage of that DPS out of position, but now has a recall and needs to or doesn't have a recall and needs to escape. Huh? Bigger Mac. Oh, finally taken down there. Um, Has that getting a little bit of help from Fluffy Munchkin slept in the back seat of D9 capitalized. They do just that. The PCOW have the majority of the point. A little bit of a contention coming through from OC Hammer. Finally taken down. The rest of D9 will retreat and PCOW cap the point first. Ooh. Big Mac leaving a little bit on though. Able to get a few kills while PCOW is being a little bit lackadaisical and a little bit too aggressive. I don't know if D9 will have the numbers to, you know, make the most of that while J Wraith is coming back to point. I think it'd be just fine. 25% gone for PCOW. A little bit of a poke coming through for D9. Susie's back for D9, looking to damage over the top. Has a rocket barrage. Cash pull has a coalescence for the other side. But really, everybody building ultimates quickly. Bigger Mac very close to a dragon strike, but then drops via J Wraith. After taking down Fluffy Munchkin, Coalescence here coming out from Cash Bowl. Over the Rocket Rush from Susie's back, able to catch Mongods before dropping. I got half sack as well, and D9 may have a bit of the numbers advantage here. Taking maybe a sixth of the point or so. It's just J Wraith and little snipes duking it out here. Finally, little snipes drops. It's just Baby Diva left. A little bit of help from Bigger Mac. I don't know if J Wraith can hold this up. Fluffy Munchkin getting back into the fray here, but. I think D9, maybe we'll come back into this. They certainly seem to have the numbers on point. Oh, they did have, I should say. I still think PCOW has the advantage. Res coming through here from yeah. the Prophet onto OC Hammer, but that Aris is just surrounded and may not be in a good spot. Yeah, and it looks like it is retreating. 82% now for D9, or for PCOW, and yeah, some of these late kills could really come back and bite D9 if they're not careful. I think. PCOW may have this one. I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like they might. That self destruct is going to be crucial here for PCOW. We'll see if the Graviton comes out right at the edge of points. Exactly what you'd expect, but they're able to get into the overtime. Fantastic kills going the way of PCOW, though, and cleaning up the rest of this D9 attack. Yeah, just solid, solid wrap up there for PCOW. They finish on the team kill, and they will tie up the series. And fantastic response here from PCOW, tying up the series. Now we go into Rialto. Both these teams 4-0, but it's a winner take all when we come back. You're watching the Overwatch Xbox community. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe to our channel or donate at oxgaming.com. All funds collected goes to prizes for season and tournament winners. 
to our current subscribers, we appreciate your continued support. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more OXC action after this short break. Welcome back to the Overwatch Xbox community. Both teams from the Challenger tier here, PCOW and D9, 4-0, and both with a map win in this best of three series, looking for the win on Rialto. It's been a fantastic game so far. I'm your host, Salt and Pepper, joined by uh, Fallen Potatius. And Fallen, that this game, everything we hoped it would be, everything we expected it to be, both these two teams going back and forth. And uh, yeah, who do you think can take this here on Rialto? <laughs> See... Yeah, the game so far has been everything we hoped, and even a lot more. But I've been looking at what chat has been saying, and I think people, like the fan favourite to win this is D9. And after the way they performed first game, if they can perform like that again, then yeah, they can take the win. But after that second map, PCOW seemed to be coming out a lot stronger than they did on the first map which if that carries over and which it likely is to carry over because they've got the ball rolling now they've already got one map wing the bag so oh, they're like okay it's even we can go we can win this kind of idea in their head that could be dangerous and that could make them win but with like any other sport it all matters on the day and in the game how you perform which, yeah, so it's going to be a fun match, and I'm just going to wait and see what happens, because it could be anyone's game. Interesting, the uh, chat going the way of D9. I think PCOW has proven a strong defense. Uh, however, they are attacking first this time, so it could be kind of the difference maker here. Uh, D9 had a little bit of a stronger attack, or defense rather, on Volskaya. We'll see if it translates to this game. Again, teams have switched sides. It's D9 here on the left, Bigger Mac again on the Hanzo. I think that's been a good play for them. He's been a standout along with Susie's back over there on the Farah. Little snipes on Divas. OC Hammer goes Orissa. Perform Truth has been a solid Anna and the Prophet back over onto Mercy. For the attackers, it's Pride on the Reinhardt's Mangat zone over on Zarya. J Wraith still undecided, but a DPS player that's gone. A bit of Soldier in this game. They may try a little bit of Farah as well. We'll have to see. Half sack over onto the 
Junkrat as Cash Bowls on Moira, Fluffy Munchkin on the Anna. standard attack here but neither team with the uh, support ultimate that completely negate the other side so he thinks like you know as soon as he's back with the rocket barrage or you know bigger mac able to be, again be so effective with those dragon strikes uh, no transcendence or sound barrier or anything for the attackers to negate that uh, really for either side so they may that may come into play here divas for both sides though they can eat a lot of that so i'm looking to avoid things like a tactical visor here from j wraith uh, little snipes with the diva there so a little bit of back and forth but again not having those uh, just complete negating uh, support ultimates could prove crucial now dropping on to the point is OC Hammer um, pride dropping first though getting help from little snipes so he's back to get a kill on J Wraith Hasek answers one back having switched over to the McCree but I think the defender still with a bit of the advantage nice sleep there from Fluffy Munchkin on to uh, little snipes OC Hammer back and divide his half sack drops but um, I think all, Bigger Mac already with the Dragon Strike, able to take down Fluffy Munchkin before dropping. And hard to tell who has the advantage. Uh, I think it's going to end up being PCOW though, just because they have a shorter respawn. Really kind of pushing in onto OC Hammer here. Payload moving in behind them, but now Susie's back trying to answer one back here for the defense. And they finally, I think they are able to finally get the kills to shut down the Payload. Uh, this first choke, especially on, on Rialto here, can be so difficult to maneuver with how tight it is, and you really need good coordination. There's so much high ground for the defenders to uh, kind of sit up on and really poke a lot of damage through, which makes it tough. Jay Ray, they will come back in and get Reformed Truth. What were you about to say, Bowen? Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, definitely. With that first corner, it is very, very tight. Like, once you get around that, and into the open it's kind of like a funnel if you think for that for the attackers like the attackers coming from like the bottom of the funnel and then have to come out and spread out whereas the defense if they set up properly it was just like sh shooting down the funnel and it's very like much going to be like shooting fish in the barrel kind of scenario but as the attackers have shown they've pushed past that and capped first point yeah, i think pcow benefiting from their type play style staying in close and behind that pride shield He's uh, just about with a Earth Shatter here, and they are very close to five ultimates. The attack is very strong. Uh, D9, however, with six of their own, and you expect some to come out here pretty soon. Susie's back to him trying to flank a little bit, get in behind, and may try and do that here. It's a self destruct coming out from Mongods. Does find the Prophet, but here's the Shadow come through. J Wraith in from behind. It's all, it's all over the place. Now Pride, Nanode, looking to create some space. There's a Nano on the other side. Fantastic pin from Pride to avoid the self-destruct, pin it out of the way and completely save his team. I think I've only seen that done like once or twice before. That was impressive for Pride, yeah. just able to get that out of the way. And I don't know if he intended to do it, we'll just we'll give him benefit of the doubt and say he saw that yeah. and uh, got into a good position. But definitely, as a main tank player myself, trying to pull something like that off is very, very dangerous and very scary because even like a second or a millisecond mistimed and the Diva Bomb's just going to block in your face. Able to save the rest of his team though, now still getting some of these kills, Fluffy Munchkin able to take down OC Hammer, Bigger Mac answering one back, but PCOW just largely just brushing aside the defense from D9, they're cruising directly through to this final point. Dragon Strike coming through, doesn't quite catch anybody, delays the defense ever so slightly, but they're still rolling just as strongly. Zeus is back on the top, able to get some spam damage through, and does take Mongods out of mech. So maybe able to delay this attack a little bit, but very strong up to this point. Now it's another Cash Bowl Coalescence used very effectively last time. Continuing to allow PCOW to push through, largely uncontested, and Gina just keeps backing up and giving them the space to do so. Prophet gets Susie's back back on his feet, a nice biotic grenade in onto the attack. Self destruction both sides. See, and get as anybody doubles for both teams. Still a 4v4 here. Actually, I actually think the defenders have a, of the attack is a bit of an advantage, having taken down Fluffy Munchkin uh, or Reform Truth a little bit, a little bit ago. But the defenders with the shorter respawn will probably expect to be able to at least halt this attack, albeit briefly. Susie's back with a tire, finds his opposite, and will take him down. Cash Bowl will take a little snipes out of mech. So really, it is just a back and forth. It's kind of a boxing match between these two sides. D9 finally finding their footing here on the third section. 
ultimate still for the attack though, and I think they have a bit of the advantage in that department. Red's coming back through Little Snipes, back up for the defense, and again, now that they've been able to find a spot to really settle in behind this OC Hammer Shield, uh, it's starting to look a little bit better for the team in blue. Ooh, now an Ando Boost coming in on a Pride, able to use a Shatter and takes down uh, a few blue that's reformed troop back there. Little Snipes had one as well, but the attack, uh, getting all of the kills in the feed. Massive momentum they needed to continue pushing the payload. Still three minutes on the clock for PCOW. Gonna be a last minute contention, definitely enough time to do so. It's performed true switching over to Lucio back out a little bit soon and a little bit isolated. Gets beat immediately. J Wraith, though, with a, a tactical visor, catches a couple. Bigger Mac able to get two back the other direction. I think the defense may be able to wrap this up. Blancot's got a couple good picks, but defenders again right outside their own spawn door, able to get back to the point and push back this PCOW attack. Not a lot of ultimates for either side. Mongod's close to a self-destruct. Little snipes on your screen already has one. We will look to delay this attack as it comes in. you kind of surprised they're not pushing in on j Ray. completely isolated over there and really could get out a, a staggered kill to prevent PCOW from being able to attack. Finally, they do get that kill. Fantastic stagger there. Uh, Bigger Mac able to take down that soldier. So now um, PCOW kind of hamstrung a little bit by only having the five members to come into this attack and they'll have to waste a little bit more time to wait for their soldier to come back into the fray. J Wraith opting for an aerial attack and said, interesting pick onto the Pharah. Obviously the opportunity for the spam in through the doorway, but um, maybe a bit of a difficult once they get further in and closer to that final point with the ceiling here in this cathedral, it could be a little bit difficult. Self-destruct coming through. Both self-destructs not really catching anybody for either side. Halo continuing to push, but it's nice tight defense here from PTOW. Or from D9, rather. Bigger Mac able to get the kill into Cash Bowl. They stay here with the advantage. The Dragon Strike coming through. We'll catch a couple. Oh, just the one half sack with the damage done for them. Fluffy Munch going to be able to answer one back for the attack. Little Snipes now at a mech. will probably avoid the poke to keep that Diva from getting the mech back before this next attack. But again, the, the defense from D9 really showing up here on the third point. Also, I'm not sure if you could, you've could you noticed this, but the way D9 are moving when they are defending this payload, they're all moving as a whole unit. Like where one person goes, they all will go, which I think is an amazing thing. Yeah, no doubt about it, but now answering the other direction, PCOW, the shatter gets two kills quick there. Yeah. Pride has to hack with the double tire, and this may be it for PCOW. <laughs> Ooh, pushing in very aggressively. It's just the Lucio here for D9. Reform True trying to delay as long as possible. Finally drops. Susie's back. 3% away from the tire, but couldn't make couldn't stay alive long enough. Pride with another nano boost and has been very effective with them, with them just swinging away and trusting the support to keep him up. Able to find the kill on the bigger Mac. Here's that tire coming through from Susie's back. Hasn't quite found anybody just yet. The defenders have a sound barrier up and that could be helpful. Looks like they are starting to get a few of these kills though. PCOW is still trying to attack as aggressively as it can, but they've whittled this time bake down to 10 seconds. It's another Dragon Strike directly into the heart of the attackers here from Bigger Mac. Hasn't caught anybody, but does force them to split up a little bit. Kills going all the way around for T9, and actually a very solid hold for them. I think they will be able to put this through. Oof, at the death, what a fantastic defense from D9 at the third point. Completely just allowing PCOW to roll through that, those first two sections, and uh, really digging their heels in and they're able to get the stop here and prevent the third point. So now all up to uh, PCOW to try and defend just as strongly. D9 looking to put in a strong attack and win this game. This is it, final round of the match right here. Yep, this is the... Yeah, I'm sorry, this guys. is the end. And it all comes down to this. I've just been in shock about how intense past two maps have been, and so has this map. Like some amazing alt usage, which everyone wants to see when it comes to an Overwatch game. They just want to see amazing teamwork, amazing alt usage, and just have fun and watch like an amazing game. And that's what we're having right here. Amazing, intense game. It was a, uh, like we said, all game. Um... This really kind of living up to its potential. Two four no teams from the challenger tier sitting there towards the top, or at the top rather, and uh, just duking it back and forth, looking for supremacy going into the second week of the season. Uh, playoff standings will be released later on, but 
I think both these teams know that they are well within the mix to get there, and I'd like to see this be a precursor to a playoff matchup. We'll see if one of the other challenger teams can come back into the mix, and um, you know maybe they'll be one of the ones to make it to the final. But if, you know, if you're looking at this tier right now, these two teams have to be the front runners. Definitely looking forward to seeing these two teams back when it comes to playoffs. Absolutely. Falling maybe into the trap of the pirate ship. We'll see if they can pull it off. Bigger Mac here looking for the bash and play onto the cart. Defenders maybe expecting it. They've got the defense majors to kind of keep him up, but a lot of the spam coming through, and Bigger Mac can't really get set up here. They did get the shield onto the payload, so we'll see if that gives them a little bit of space. Finally, we'll get the final pick on the Fluffy Munchkin. He kills going the way of D9 quickly. Yeah, and now the defense is completely set back. They don't want to get staggered, so it's kind of a smart response from them, but allowing this D9 attack to just roll directly through the center. A purple onto Pride, unlike the bubble originally, but not quite able to get the health back, and will drop, completely rolling through this first section, our D9, and yeah, I think I think PCOW are just going to have to retreat. The double threat here, Bigger Mac on the Bastion, and Susie's back on the Fair Up. Those two DPSers have been a thorn in... At PCOW side for the most of this game. I don't know if J Wraith has been able to really contend with this Pharah. A pin coming through. Interesting decision there from Pride because now he's got a, a long spot. Uh, they had already basically capped the point. There really wasn't room to contest. Goes through the pin, wasn't even on the payload, and then dies there. So that's going to be huge for the attackers. Continuing to push this very smoothly as two additional members now of PCOW will hit the deck. Mo Mon God's down as well, and this can turn into a very uh, just a, you know, a bit of a slaughter gear through the second section. Yeah, if you, man, if you thought PCOW's attack was ruthless, D9 just swatting away the defenders as they push this payload through. Now it's higher for Hassack, looking to slow down the oh, progress, coming oh. in from over the top, the seed all the way, and they are able to destroy it. Disappointing to see that alt go arrive, and now finally we'll take on that Bastion. Pride coming in and not having any more of it. PCOW's defense could be... Finally able to stop this payload, but yeah, it looks like I think they are getting kills. Pride will take little snipes out of mech. J Wraith with a nice solid heat, a double two its rocket. And yeah, that's gonna be PCOW wrapping up this point. Four minutes and thirty seconds on the clock for D9. Four ultimates for D9 coming back into attack. It's gonna be four in just about a second as Cash Bolt picks up the Valkyrie here for PCOW. Actually almost six ultimates. OC Hammer will be the only one without on the blue team and only 19% away. Susie's back over the top with the rocket looking to come back in behind this defense. This could be a dirty barrage if they're able to pull this off. Hopefully they're aware of the threat, but possibly not. Here's the damage boost coming in from the Prophet looking for the perfect opportunity and may just find it. Oh, but first it's J-Ray with the tactical visor looking for Prophet in the sky and it's able to take him down. Little snipes dropping as well and PCOW maybe will round up this attack very quickly. The Transcendence, uh, an interesting decision from Fluffy Munchkin. I think they had about two or three picks already, and I think that fight may have already been won, but um, maybe just a little bit of extra icing on the cake. Susie's back able to answer one back for the team in blue, but finally drops via Mon Gods, and PCOW continues to hold. Oh, you know what you noticed there, though? All the ultimates used on the side of PCOW. It was three. Both um, support ultimates plus J Wraith had the tactical visor. It's still five ultimates on the side of D9. So you expect them to come back mm -hmm. in with some aplomb and uh, finish up this B checkpoint. Just three minutes on the clock, though. PCOW continued to hold this and they will win the game. So all to play for here for D9. PCOW just looking to hang on for their very lives. So I'm looking in the chat and someone mentioned someone wasted an Earth Shower. I did not see an Earth Shower. Anytime recently. So yeah, the fact that we, none of us noticed it, it means yeah, it must have been wasted because otherwise I'm sure one of us would have pointed it out. Yeah, too true. Kind of odd to see that. Uh, the Graviton coming through does catch a couple. Little Snipe still has the Nano Boost. I don't know if anything really came with that grab just yet. Reform Truth now falling. PCOW still getting some of the kills they need here. Here comes a Shatter. Fantastically timed. That was a good Oh shot. my god. Yeah, just picking up the pieces here is this Reinhardt and another solid defense from PCOW. Oh, what a massive shatter from Pride. Yeah. And almost all the ultimates completely gone there for D9, not really able to take advantage. 
and uh, Bigger Mac has to switch back over to the Hanzo, finally off the Bastion. And, uh, wow, yeah, what a response there from PCOW. Two minutes away now from winning this game and taking it the sole place atop the Challenger tier. Ooh, Bigger Mac taking down Pride. That's huge for them, but they do have a res for that Reinhardt. It's going to be crucial for them. They don't have it for the rest of the fight. Bigger Mac, or Reform Truth, able to take one down. So it's still a 6v5 as they can't res that Junkrat. Pride in kind of a tough spot. A little bit low. Reform Truth over to the Zenyatta. Now he's able to Discord and is able to take down that Reinhardt. Not able to save his tank. Was Fluffy Munchkin using other Transcendence and maybe not quite as effective as they would have liked. Jay Wraith with his tactical visor gets caught into a trap, and D9 finally have a little bit of momentum moving forward. Knocking on the door of the B checkpoint. Definitely not as much time as D9 had coming into this section, or as PCOW had, I apologize. But they look like yeah, they will be able to cap B, and now a bit of a discombobulated defense from PCOW. Very strong before, but kind of struggling here. It's a Dragon Strike coming through from Bigger Mac. Is able to catch Bond Gods. Now the Staggers on for PCOW, the attackers. There's the Shatter. Catches three, but they can't capitalize. And they'll be able to just stand right back up and continue moving the payload. And nice to catch three there, but largely ineffective as uh, nobody was there to clean up the rest of those kills. Now just two minutes on the clock right down here at the final checkpoint. This is exactly what you want to see from both of these sides. All to play for. All they need to do is cap that yellow rectangle and PCOW, or D9 to win this game, but PCOW just trying to defend for their absolute lives. Fantastic. Yeah, it looks like it's a, tra a transcendence coming out here from Reform Troops completely the gate the Graviton. Solid from them. And I think that may be it. Just solid uh, support oh. ultimate able to continue pushing back through. Kills going either way. As soon as he's back, the tire just completely falls flat. Fight able to take it down. Half stack hitting the kill on the bigger Mac. Payload continuing to creep forward. Not a lot of ultimates on the board, just fluffy much into the transcendence. Kills going the way of D9, continuing to push. It's another transcendence out for fluffy much just to keep everybody up. Half stack able to take full advantage, getting two picks there. 75 seconds left for D9 to try and continue pushing this, but I think the defenders will hold here. It's getting so stressful right now. Both teams are probably feeling the pressure. 60 mm -hmm. seconds yeah. left to decide this game. Tied up 1-1 here. Both teams 4-0 looking for supremacy in the challenger tier. PCOW trying to hold on to this defense with their lives completely down. Oh, man, the tire immediately Bigger down. Mac. Bigger Mac has been, again, just a dominant player on the side. A DPS 4-D9 that's really kind of made the difference. Hitting a kill there. Able to take down the tire. Here comes a shadow oh. from Pride, though. This is the pin into the wall. But the attack is on here yeah. from, from uh, PCOW. Able to clean up a couple. Dragon Bigger Mac trying to one back and to get three kills. And they continue pushing the payload, but oh my god. Hard to tell who has the advantage. 24 seconds on the oh. clock. The defender's holding for as long as they can, but PCOW... Last push, last push. Here we go. Finally, it's all done nothing time. right now. Yeah, this is it. Ooh. Last fight right here. 13 seconds left. Oh man, the ultimates. Just few and far between for both sides. Little Snipes actually about to pick one up here for the defenders. Maybe a couple more. Here's the initiation from... That Diva oh. finds absolutely nothing, and that'll be disappointing. Susie's back with the tire, looking to catch a couple. Into the middle, catches two. Susie's That's fantastic back. here. Four D9 have a little bit of momentum coming through, but they need to finish oh. up with these kills. Three answer back the other direction for the defenders. PCOW are doing a fantastic job. Numbers dwindling for both sides. Pride still back in the mix, and J-Wave trying to hold on for as long as possible for these defenders. Oh, oh, oh no. Have they done it? Oh. Transcendence last minute God. coming through just to try and contest. <laughs> Mongod's back on the point. Reinforcement streaming in from both sides. Little Snipes doesn't have a mech, though. Oh, does get it back. The number's really pouring in here for D9. Right in overtime. 4.96 meters away. Here comes a tire over the top. Reform troops down. Overtime meter threatens to tick, but it doesn't quite go. Oh my... Who has this game? I don't know. <laughs> it's so intense right now. Oh... Bigger Mac trying to use another Dragon oh, Strike. I think it was actually clean on, there. Man. The Diva able to pick that one up. Mongod's eating that, but then falling. D9 with the kills though, look at the feed going blue for them. The payload trying to push, okay, J-Wraith teleports back in, doesn't have the advantage. Members start oh, to drop, no, but PCOW and D9 <laughs> wins the game. How did they manage? Like, damn. What an insane finish from D9, and just yeah. forcing it all the way through. PCOW was such a strong defense, but not quite able to get over the line. And all credit to the D9 defense in the first round, able to 
uh, fend off that attack for, I think it was like four minutes. They're right on the doorstep of the cathedral. And uh, just, what a fantastic, fantastic uh, defense from them to be able to put this back through and, and just, oh, what a game. What a game. Yeah, it was an amazing game. The whole, all three maps have just been so damn good. Like, I'm surprised that there was actually a winner at the end of it. I thought, you know, we would have sort of won a couple of ties or something. Oh, spectacular game from both sides. Put some post-game reactions right over this. You're watching the Overwatch Xbox community. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe to our channel or donate at onzgaming.com. All funds collected goes to prizes for season and tournament winners. For our current subscribers, we appreciate your continued support. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more OXC action after this short break. Oh, wow, what a game here. Congratulations to D9 for getting the win, going 5-0 over PCOW. And uh, spectacular performance. Um, obviously, the, the defense on both sides, they, a little bit wavering at times, but it created uh, some exciting matches there towards the end. Obviously, you see the scores 4-3, uh, 3-2, 2-1, 1, just very tight games all the way around. Uh, I'm your host, Sultan Pepper, and just enjoyed watching that game. We've got Fallen Octavius and uh, Fallen. Just post-game thoughts, man. Like, how do you even react to that? I... I honestly don't know. Like, I'm surprised that there was a definitive winner at the end of that because both teams were playing so strong. Like, yeah, PCO in the first map, they weren't playing as strong as the second, but towards the very end, like the second and the third, even the third map, both teams just gave it their all. They really wanted that number one spot in their tier, and D9 just had what it takes to come away with it. And I bet right now they're sitting in a, like a party chat or whatever, talking to each other, and they're just so happy and over the moon at what they've managed to achieve. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, just, again, spectacular response from them. I uh, really enjoyed seeing that from uh, D9 and PCOW. Like I said, looking forward to this game all week, and it definitely lived up to the potential. Uh, we've got another stream directly after this in uh, 15 minutes. Blaze WSC has got the, uh, a game with Corbeck. Over on his channel, we'll be hosted here, so definitely stick around for that. Uh, we'll try and get a little bit of post game. We're going to try and do some uh, maybe an interview with the uh, with Susie's back, Captain of D9. Uh, stick around, and we'll be right back. Uh, get you some highlights, and uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. Which will be OC post game in just a second. Tactical Bats are trying to come through. Bigger Mac shooting down J-Ray before he really got a lot going. Now it's a just spawn sent. Dragon Strike already a point gone there for PCO Dev or for D9 rather and a really solid. 
almost goes down. I still think the defense is holding on pretty strongly. Now it's a third ultimate here from J-Ray, just with the tactical visor and no protection for the attackers. The defense matrix will hold off a little bit, a little bit hurt by the uh, Junkrat spam. But then I believe it's the defense matrix, but I think uh, the swap with the Graviton and uh, Bubble is going to be totally worth it. Fantastic Shatter coming in from Pride, able to catch a couple, but trying to negate it the other direction. It's a triple oh. kill for Bigger Mac. <laughs> Still a high ground setup. Now the attack coming out around their right hand side, the defensive left to see if they can disrupt this high ground push. Swings back, trying to keep them into the doorway. Now has a tire. We'll use that into space and catches Pride. That could be crucial for them. Another dragon strike here. Sound barriers to keep everybody up. Self destruct from Lil Snipes catches two. It's fantastic here for the defenders as it's the dragon strike catching another two. It's protecting you from big. Still a high ground setup. Now the attack coming out around their right hand side. The defensive left to see if they can disrupt this high ground push. Swings back, trying to keep them in through the doorway. Now has a tire. We'll use that into space. He catches Pride. Snipe switching over to a support now. Here Moira is always uh, Stays on the Pride hearts. The form troop over to a few in the front. Still on Mercy. So um, nice flexibility from them. But again, just oh. can't get any picks that early. It's going to be huge. Swing in big. It's a half sack. That uh, pole haul coming through. Cash bowl drops though for the attackers. It's Kills going kind of the other way. Suze is back and can catch a fantastic double there. And once again, the defenders economic damage does delay them slightly. Now trying to come back in aggressively. Pride using a shatter, catching four. What a fantastic shatter here from Pride. Swinging away and completely taking control of the match. Get the picks and they find it here on this Roadhog. It's a little bit of help, but Luke, but just over the pit, over the edge. Mongo's going to put two back off as D9 caps this point early. Nice aggressive uh, defense here. Little Snipes getting a fantastic pull through J Wraith. Or through, through the shield, grabs J Wraith, and now Mongoth is down as well. Little Snipes doing a good job here on the road. Yeah. That self destruct is going to be crucial here for PCOW. We we'll see the Graviton comes out right at the extra points. Exactly what you would expect. They're able to get into the overtime. Fantastic kills going the way of PCOW, though, and cleaning up the rest of this. Yeah, just solid, solid wrap up there for PCOW. They finish on the team kill and they tie up the series. J Wraith in from behind, it's all, it's all over the place. And now Pride nanoed, looking to create some space. There's a nano on the other side. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> pin from Pride to avoid the self destruct. J Wraith in from behind, it's all, it's all over the place. And now Pride nanoed, looking to create some space. There's a nano on the other side. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> pin from Pride to avoid this payload. They're all moving as a whole unit. Like where one person goes, they all will go. Which I think is an amazing thing. Yeah, no doubt about it, but now answer the other direction. PCW, the shatter gets two kills quick there. Yeah. So I'm looking in the chat and someone mentioned that someone wasted an Earth Shatter. I did not see an Earth Shatter anytime recently. Form Truth now falling. PCW still getting some of the kills they need here. Here comes a shatter. Fantastically timed. That was a good Oh shot. my god. Yeah, just picking up the pieces here is this Reinhardt and another solid defense for PCW. Oh.
turn the stream on to see if it lets me hear it. So uh, I actually uh, talked to Pride, their captain, a lot, and we just been in the competition the whole time since like two and zero, and we've been waiting for this one. So that was awesome. Yeah, man. Characters we normally play on that map, so we're we're a little clustered there. But uh, Rialto, man, that's the map. We uh, we thought it was easy. Um, yes. Yeah, so so uh, with that defense, like going into that last round, we thought it was going to be easy. Um, and then we noticed we had two minutes left on. Uh, on trying to get that third checkpoint and then we got it with a couple seconds left and clicked to overtime i got speed boosted in got like three picks and i'm so my team made it in time dude and it was just an awesome last fight Yeah, so as uh, soon as we get one pick, our goal is to just rush everything. Um, and their Rhyme did a really good damage at blocking. So we had to go to a lot of spam damage to try and get past that. Um, but yeah, they're a brawling team too. Their Rhyme, I, I think, is probably the best in the league. Thank you, man. You'll know our names by the end of this. <laughs> yeah, not sure if you guys are able to hear that too well, but the, we had Susie's back, the uh, captain of D9, or, uh, after their spectacular win, trying to get this post game going for you and uh, see if we can incorporate, incorporate that in more shooting. So I apologize for any audio issues, but some of the highlights here for you, just kind of talking about the game with Susie's back, and you kind of saw some of his responses. Um, Nepal was going to be a little bit difficult for them after PCOW came out very strongly and honestly I think D9 could have won it there on um, on Nepal. Looks really good but um, it went to 1-1. Obviously that third round um, PCOW was able to edge it out but I think maybe just mismanaged ultimates kind of did D9 in a little bit. Um, but yeah PCOW able to come back into the game there getting the win on Nepal and then we go to Rialto and obviously uh, what a game here. A really strong attack initially from PCOW and you kind of see it cruising directly through um, Pride had a fantastic play right here able to knock the diva bomb out of the way and had a lot of time coming to this third checkpoint but eventually it was um, you know D9 able to hold up a strong defense and then coming back in on there uh, subsequent attack just quite you know able to get it over the line and benefiting from a defense that held that third point so long so um, again just fantastic game really enjoy Getting to cast it with Fallen, who uh, I hope he's not he's able to make it to the party. I might still be in the call though, actually. Let's see if we got Fallen in here. 
Oh, not the case. Um, but solid job casting with him. Really appreciated it, and I uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Um, you can't yet just, you know, what can you do? I think uh, this game lived up to every expectation, and I really enjoyed bringing it to you. Finish out the rest of these highlights, and we'll send you on your way uh, for the Overwatch Xbox community and for uh, the challenger tier, PCOW D9 for Fallen Contagious, some salt and pepper, and see you guys next time. that into space and catches pride could be crucial for them another dragon strike here sound barriers to keep everybody up self-destruct from little snipes catches two it's fantastic here for the defenders as the dragon strike catching another two is protecting you from big kill high ground setup now the attack coming out around their right hand side the defensive left to see if they can disrupt this high ground first he's back trying to keep them in through the doorway now has a tire we'll use that into space and catches pride he snipes switching over to a support down here moira is always your hammer Stays on the Reinhardt, perform truth over to a repeat in the front of Seal Mercy. So, um, nice flexibility from them, but again, just oh. can't get any picks that early. It's going to be huge. And swing in big. It's a half sack. Uh, whole hog coming through. Cash pull drops, though, for the attackers. It's kills going kind of the other way. Seuss is back. It's going to catch a fantastic double there. And once again, the defenders economic damage does delay them slightly. Now trying to come back in aggressively. Pride using a shatter. Catching four. What a fantastic shatter here from Pride. Swinging away and completely taking control of the match. Picks and they find it here on this road hog. It's a little bit of health, but boot, but just over the pit, over the edge, Mongo's going to push two back off as D9 caps this point early. It's aggressive uh, defense here, little snipes getting a fantastic pull through J Wraith, or boot through the shield, grab J Wraith, and now Mongo's is down as well. Little snipes doing a good job here on the road hog. That self destruct is going to be crucial here for PCOW. We'll see if the Graviton comes out right at the edge of the points. Exactly what you would expect. They're able to get into the overtime. Fantastic kills going the way of PCOW though and cleaning up the rest of this. Yeah, just solid, solid wrap up there for PCOW. They finish on the team kill and they tie up the series. J Wraith in from behind. It's all, it's all over the place. Now Pride nanoed. Looking to create some space. There's a nano on the other side. Ooh, fantastic <laughs> pin from Pride to avoid the self destruct. J Wraith in from behind. It's all, it's all over the place. Now Pride nanoed. Looking to create some space. There's a nano on the other side. <sighs> Fantastic okay. pin from Pride to a Bending this payload. They're all moving as a whole unit. Like where one person goes, they all will go. Which I think is an amazing thing. Yeah, no doubt about it, but now answer the other direction. PCW the shatter gets two kills quick there. Yeah. So I'm looking in the chat and someone mentioned that someone wasted an earth shower. I did not see an earth shower anytime recently. 